can Western sexual culture be exported to countries that typically repress sexual behavior? Uh, that's something that uh, Solange just recently wrote about, and it's really fascinating because it turns out that people in Iran and China are using a sexual revolution to uh, get rid of oppressive governments. So. Uh, an uh, author by the name of Pardis Man Mandavi went to uh, Iran to kind of explore the sexual culture there. And as you guys know, Ahmadinejad and the morality police are not buying any of that. Uh, they don't want to hear about orgies, they don't want to hear about group sex, they don't want to hear about anything other than a husband and wife having sex for the sole purpose of reproducing. Um, but it turns out that the youth in Iran, about uh, two-thirds of people in Iran are very young, um, are engaging in this sexual revolution where they will get together, they will take tremendous risks to have these crazy sex parties. And at first when I heard about this, I'm like, there's no way this is happening in Iran. It's way too much of a risk. But uh, this researcher actually experienced them and she wrote about them extensively. No, no, they're unreal. Yeah. It made me want to go to Iran <laughs> to have a good time. I was like, and then I was like, what am I thinking? That's crazy, right? Yeah. But like the descriptions of the orgies are unparalleled. They would make Americans blush. And it's interesting because you can't bottle it up. You can't bottle it up. Mm -hmm. And it's partly a political, they say, a form of protest and reform, et cetera. It's partly because they're young and they're tired of going around and you know, all covered up and they're having their women covered up and they just want to have sex. And instead of having sex in a quote unquote normal way, yeah. once you unleash the dragon, yeah. they're like, let's have at it, Oz. Yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> true. I, I, it's, it's like kids who have extremely strict parents. The more strict your parents are, the more likely you are to rebel and rebel hard. You know, and, and I feel like that's what we're seeing in, in, in Iran and China as well, but not to the extent of Iran. So let me give you an example of one person who's involved in all these sex parties. It's a 23-year-old Iranian, and he, he says the following. In Iran, all things related to sex had a door, a closed one. Now, this generation are opening them one by one. Masturbation, open it. Teenage sexual feelings, open that door. Pregnancy outside of marriage, open it. Now the, now the youth are trying to figure out what to do with all these openings doors. Well, I think they figured out what to do with the opening doors, if you know what I mean. Okay, describe the orgies. You'll they All right. So, uh, you know, the, the, she's actually an anthropologist. So the anthropologist goes to one of the sex parties and she described it as such. I continued to watch as bodies moved from one trio to another. A group of five men and women huddled together below me. I couldn't tell who was kissing whom and I couldn't see how much oral or penetrative sex was taking place. But it seemed that most of the people were completely naked and from the movements I could see, it looked as though half were having some kind of sex. Damn. And, and she described it as, you know, she walked in, this is like a house party, and there's a big pool in the backyard, but the pool is completely empty. She walks up to the edge of the pool and she just sees like numerous people at the bottom of the pool, this empty pool, having sex with one another. And she sits on the diving board and looks down below and she can hardly tell who's in who. Okay, yeah. And, and yeah, and she's in a northern part of Iran, apparently in like, an area that's heavily wooded, you go through the woods and then they, you get to like almost like a, the way she described it, it seemed like a Nirvana-esque place where they're like, the guy literally says to her, welcome to the jungle. And then wild, insane sex is breaking out. Mm -hmm. Like the different genders with one another, orgies, you know, she, as she described it, oral, vaginal, anal, every kind of sex you can imagine in groups. So it's, Amazing! It is amazing. So uh, one Iranian woman said the following, and I think that this is very, um, you know, symbolic and indicative of, of why this kind of stuff is happening. We hate our government, despise our families, and our husbands make us sick. If we don't look fabulous, smile, laugh, and dance, well, then we might as well just go and die. And remember, th these are people who are forced into arranged marriages, people who have to cover head to toe, like you can't show your toes while you're walking in public. And they're just like, F it, like we're, we're going all out. Th that quote tripped me out because I had assumed that it was younger people who were not yet married. I don't know why I assumed that. And then I was like, oh no, she's got a husband at home and she's at the bottom of a pool mm -hmm. where people can't tell what's going on. And then later she puts on her, you know, chidora or burka or what, depending on the culture you're in, etc. She's like, hey, how you doing, hubby? 
oh yeah, I can't stand you, but that's all right, because I just had three guys in a pool. But think about how much of a risk that is. Like, if you are caught in a car with someone of the opposite sex, you will face jail time. And the morality police has gotten a little more lenient, but not that much. So if you're caught at, at like this orgy party, at this huge sex party, I mean, forget the lashes. I mean, you're gonna spend some serious time in prison as a result of it. And it's just, it's a huge risk. Well, I mean, let me be specific about that. In 2004, uh, the, this article talks about a, a nationwide attention to a public execution of a 17-year-old girl suspected of having premarital sex. So that's as severe as it can get, of course, but listen to this. If you're caught drinking, you could be detained and sentenced up to 70 lashes. Can you imagine? Like, we take it for granted here. Oh, just go grab a beer, right? You have a beer there, they whip you 70 lashes. It's possible. They don't do it every time, obviously, and obviously they don't catch most of the people, and they have relaxed a little bit. Mm -hmm. But this is all possible and has happened in the past. Premarital sex could be punished by imprisonment and lashings. Unmarried men and women caught in a car together just being caught in a car together, not just necessarily sex. You're unmarried, it's a man and a woman, sad day. Could receive up to 84 lashings each. Jeez. I mean, look, it's brutal no matter how you describe it, but what kind of a sick guy would whip a woman 84 times? Okay, so, gee, it turns out that, that human beings are not really in favor of that, and that if you, Pen, if you bottle them up like that and they have all these pent up feelings that they don't express that in necessarily a healthy mm -hmm. monogamous way. I mean, and I'm not saying monogamy is not the, is the only healthy way of doing it. Instead, you fill up a pool full of bodies and everybody goes to work on each other, right? Yeah. So it, it, it never works. This kind of repression never works. And look, let me tell you something. This is what I've been saying on the show for 11 straight years. You don't defeat Iran or any of these oppressive places by bombing them. That is so stupid. You defeat them through our culture because ultimately our culture is better. I know that drives people crazy when I say it. But I, I'm secular. I believe in freedom. I believe that women, men should be able to choose whatever kind of sex they have mm -hmm. without being whipped, without being getting 84 lashes for being in the car with someone who's not married, right? And so, yes, I believe we should send porn to Iran. We should send every it was cell phones. Yeah. And I've been saying this literally for over a decade. So I, I have to read you this quote by Ayatollah Khomeini from 2005, because I think that it, it shows you exactly what he's afraid of. He says, more than Iran's enemies need artillery, guns, and so forth. They need to spread cultural values that lead to moral corruption. A senior official in an important American political center said, instead of bombs, send them miniskirts. He is right. If they arouse sexual desires in any given country, if they spread unrestrained mixing of men and women, and if they lead youth to behavior to which they are naturally inclined by instincts, there will no longer be any need for artillery and guns against that nation. Damn straight. Jeez. Okay, look, what happened? We carpet bombed Vietnam, killed millions of people, and they did not break. Then we left and sent in Levi's, McDonald's, and Cokes. They broke. Like, they could still call themselves communists, but who are they kidding, okay? They, people love the jeans, they love the Big Macs, and most of all, the number one U.S. commodity is the one they love the most, sex. Everybody wants to have sex because we're homo sapiens, okay? So if you give them knowledge, if you give them the internet, you give them technology, and you give them a little bit of freedom, they're going to head in our direction. So for Christ's sake, stop invading countries.